it's chapter three. The dawn of the new year arrived. It was February of 1865 and we finished eating breakfast. I was carrying a plate full of tea and opened the door to the common room. Tea is ready. Oh, thank you, Yukimura. I made my way around the room, pouring a cup of tea for each person there, making sure not to spill. He gave me a warm smile as I handed him his tea. There is nothing quite so delicious as hot tea on a cold day. Thank you. I felt a flush of pride at his words, even though I knew quite well that serving tea was hardly impressive. Just the same, I felt as if I was helping out in a way, and that was a nice feeling. Then Hijikata spoke, and his words brought me back to the present. The Yagi have been good to us so far, but this place is getting crowded. True, it is getting a little small, especially with all the new guys coming in. If we can move to a bigger place, that'd be great. Some of the guys in the dorm look stiffed. Yeah, the guys over at Maikawa residence are practically smush sushi the way they sleep. Ah, oh, to be a young grunt these days, I pity them. If only there was something we could do. Easy for us to say, but imagine trying to find who else is willing to let us stay at their place. I mean, we are Kyoto's most hated. A person sitting beside Kondo pointed at the map spread upon the table. Well, look who it is. What of this Nishi Hongwanji temple, hmm? I wonder if we should skip through this. Maybe we should. We have been introduced to him, and we are unfortunately going to be skipping through Miki as well. I really like M Miki. I just love his design. He's so cool looking. But Heisuke is nowhere to be found right now, so we can just skip through some of this. And now we don't trust that guy one bit, nor his entourage. <laughs> All right, do, 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 do. Right. Okay, so we can decide if we're going to investigate or not. Um. Well, if I return to my room, it leads me to stuff that I'm definitely not going to interact with Heisuke. I don't know if I can while Heisuke is gone. But you know what? I might as well explore one of the other options. I haven't done that yet. Just to see where that'll lead me for future routes. I'm going to muster the courage to look into this, but where should I investigate? My room is in the Yagi house. There are some rooms that I am not allowed to enter, but the captains live here as well, and I had finally learned how to navigate the building. However, there was another building that was part of the headquarters for the Shin Sengumi aside from the Yagi house. Some of the leaders, along with other warriors, live in the Maikawa house diagonal from Yagi. And Sanan, who's injured, has been holed up in the Nanbu residence located behind Yagi. Since it's a residence, one cannot just stroll there casually, and since it is barely used by anyone other than Sanan, it is a little isolated. Hmm. If there are secrets being kept from me, then they have to be kept in a place I'd never think to check. If I were to look into it, it would either be in the or the forbidden areas of the Yagi residence. Which should I look into? Okay, so we looked into Nambu House. I think that's only Soji. We ran into Soji the last time we did, so let's try doing the Yagi House and see what happens. It was night at the Yagi House and dead silent. I tiptoed down the halls as quietly as possible, hoping to not run into a certain demon commander again. Huh? Were my ears playing tricks on me, or did someone just walk into the common room? <laughs> I would be in trouble if someone saw me, so I did my best to blend into the shadows and hide. After a few moments of heart-pounding seclusion, my curiosity got the best of me. I departed my hiding place and crept toward the common room. 
I peered inside. Inside was Sanon. Okay. Wonder if that's like a direct way to finding Sanon then. I'll make a note of that. I wonder why. Something felt wrong. I just stood there. What is Sanon doing here late at night? I was at a loss. Should I speak to him, or...? Before I could make up my mind, he turned. I never thought that it would be you who would catch me. How unexpected. Sanon gazed directly at me and muttered. You're there, aren't you, Yukimura? Come out. I guess he spotted me. I gave up and made myself visible to Sanon. I'm sorry if it seemed like I was snooping or watching what you were doing. Well, I don't plan on scolding you. I mean, if you see a suspicious shadow in the middle of the night, of course you'd be curious. Huh? It was very subtle, but I noticed something was off in Sanon's attitude. He had a peaceful smile, something I hadn't seen for what felt like ages. It was a bit too peaceful, as if his worries had suddenly left him. It was an expression I have never seen since he'd gotten injured. Um... Sanon? Did something good happen? Why, yes, yeah, something did. Or rather... I guess I finally made up my mind. Something swished in his hand. Um, Sanon? What is that? You're wondering what this is, I imagine. After his cryptic reply, he showed me what was in his hand. Sanon was holding a small bottle made from fine hydro. The glass was filled with a crimson liquid that looked like a poisonous chemical to me. This is a secret treatment developed by your father, Kodo, under orders from the Shogunate. What? The Shogunate ordered my father to do something? They say it first appeared out west. The contents of this tiny vial can utterly transform a person. What do you mean by utterly transform? To put it simply, it makes them stronger and heightens their recuperative abilities. It sounded like something out of a fairy tale. If such a thing were to truly exist, the serum would be considered a miracle cure, but... There is, however, a rather serious flaw. His smile twisted only a little. I suppose you could say it was too strong. It worked as advertised, but drove its patients mad. You've seen the results yourself, haven't you? Of course. I'd seen the result of that madness the night I first met the Shinsengumi. Okita and Saito had killed off the mon off that monster with the white hair. Your assumptions are correct. Yes, those warriors you met are of that ilk. They were no longer capable of what one might call rational thought, and were little more than bloodthirsty monsters. His words brought a sharp chill down my spine. How horrible. If they lose control whenever they see blood, then they're hardly much use in battle, aren't they? As unkillable as they may be. Kodo conducted experiments on the core during the development of his treatment. No! My father? Conducting experiments on human beings that made them go mad at the sight of blood? I couldn't believe it! No, I didn't want to believe it. But there was no reason for Sanon to lie either. I saw it before my very eyes. Then did Father really... Sanon shrugged off my disbelief and continued. Unfortunately, when he disappeared, his research was put on hold. This vial here represents the fruits of my own personal research, based on what he left behind. <laughs> he shook the bottle gently. The liquid inside sloshed from side to side, almost lazily. I've diluted it as much as possible. <laughs> I had so many questions to ask him, but I didn't even know where to start, so I simply spoke the first thing that came to mind. If you drink that, will you be okay? So, that serum, will it prevent you from going mad? To be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure. I've never tested it on anyone. His smile faded. 
If I take this, my arm will heal. Assuming, of course, I've mixed it correctly. You mean you're actually considering taking it? He had no guarantee that it wouldn't simply kill him outright. And even if he did survive, it might well drive him insane. Sanon, please reconsider this. I'm sure there's some other way. You don't need to rely on the- I have no choice. This is the only way to heal this damn arm. I'm already useless here. Even the men have begun to speak ill of me behind my back. You will never understand me. I came all the way to Edo, alongside my comrades whom I thought were behind me. And now I'm left here, given a position out of pity, and left to wallow in my own uselessness. How could you say it's pity? You're a leader here! The Shinsengumi respects and needs you now more than ever! Sanan's eyes dotted with melancholy, flashing a brief smile that entertained the idea behind my words. Ah yes, I remember it well. I am a swordsman of the Shinsengumi, yes. And I am not useless, right? Sanan seemed bitterly focused on the words Hijikata said earlier. They really did affect him. There is no life for me as a swordsman. You're asking me to continue in some sort of undeath. Let me die as a person as well. No! It's not decided that it'll fail. The odds against success aren't as terrible as you think. Sanon smiled as he said that, but there was no way to know what might happen to him. Considering the worst that could happen, I couldn't sit by and allow him to do this. I... hmm, what should I do this time? Should I try persuading? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> we, we can try. Might as well. I still don't think you should take that serum. There's a higher chance that it'll fail, right? If the others knew that you were here doing this, they would all try and stop you. I'm sure Toda would be greatly disappointed. He is a good man. Oh, Sanan. I thought at first that he was beginning to reconsider, but my faint hope was shattered with words of resignation. Well then, if I should die, please give my regards to Toto. What? <laughs> I really am in hell now, to be pitied even by the likes of you. Excuse you? Those were his last words. He suddenly gulped down the red liquid stored in the bottle of fine Idro. No! The bottle slipped from Sanon's hands and crashed into a thousand tiny bits on the floor. A scarlet drop oozed down from the corner of his lip. <laughs> Sanon crumbled to the floor. Sanon! Ugh! I paused, uncertain. He groaned in agony and pulled his hand back to grip his chest over his heart. It's clear he was suffering. Hang in there! I'll go get someone right now! I took a step forward, about to place my hand gently on his back. Ah! His right arm whipped out almost too fast to see and threw me across the room. I slammed into the wall and slid to the floor. I could barely breathe. <gasps> Knocked the wind right out of me. My vision went blurry for a moment. <laughs> I looked up. Just in time to see Sanan land on top of me, his hands already reaching for my throat. Oh, okay. Well, we got an early CG of Sanan. That's kind of terrifying. I'm getting Ukiyo vibes. Anyone else? <laughs> His right arm reached from my throat, and he relentlessly started to choke me. The hands around my throat were Sanon's, but the man behind them was someone else. His silver-white hair glistening in the dim light, his bright, maddening red eyes showing through his bangs. I knew those eyes. His eyes... were the eyes of a predator, not a man. Actually, pause, I know this is a very intense moment, but I, it just suddenly occurred to me. Does he need glasses anymore? Like, if this serum can heal a destroyed arm, 
Surely he wouldn't need glasses anymore. Am I crazy? Hmm. I'm gonna be thinking about that. <laughs> I saw eyes just like the night I arrived in Kyoto. Those creatures in the alley, drenched in blood. Monsters. As he choked me, I desperately tried to keep breathing. No, this wasn't a monster. This was Sanon. He was still the man I knew. Sa- Nan! Suddenly, the fingers around my neck loosened. Gah! Had he just let me go? <coughs> I crumbled to the floor and I gasped for air through a throat still red with his handprint. My tearful eyes caught sight of Sanon, whose hair now shined white brightly. Well, I see I failed then. Perhaps I'm not as lucky as I thought. In the depth of those red eyes, there was a faint sign of reason. Sanon, are you back? Yukimura, I have a favor to ask of you. Please, kill me while you have the chance. What? His words weren't registering in my head, and I could do nothing but look into his eyes. I failed. I can already feel my mind starting to go. At this rate, I will kill you. No! In this moment, memories of when I'd first arrived in Kyoto and at the Akeda incident flashed before me. I witnessed so many deaths in this time. I came to terms with the idea that, for a member of the Shinsengumi, death is a constant. But never could I imagine taking someone's life. Most of all, Sanon's. No. I can't. I couldn't do that! I mean, you're still you, Sanon! <laughs> unintentional! I, I, I guess I was gonna get unintentional affection with someone, regardless of what I, I picked while Heisuke is away, so... Eh, why not? At least I know what to do for Sanon's route eventually. <laughs> oh, and now he's uh, spouting poetry. He's really lost it. What is this before me? Is this beauty? In spite of everything, you have faith. Welp. Even so, show the mercy of death so that I may pass! Sanan shouted at me and grabbed my collar. What? I could, I could see his red eyes flickering. Sanan struggled with his remaining willpower to fend against the madness boiling inside of him. If you don't kill me, then you will die. I know you are only here by chance, and I feel... I am sorry that I must ask you to do this. I am so, so sorry. His right hand slid off my throat, and I felt it land on the hilt of my sword. Huh? What is he doing? As I stood there confused, Sanon's fingers wrapped around the handle and began to pull. Oh no. No! Too late I realized what he meant to do and I felt ice creep up my spine. Sanon, please! You can't! I tried with all of my might to pry his arm away and prevent him from drawing my sword, but... It's made the task much harder, but a blade in my heart will kill me as dead as any other man. I can't! Kill. Me. He spoke in starts and stops now, as tendrils of madness began to pull him under. P please let me die. My sword was now completely drawn, and he pointed it towards his breast over his heart. Sanon! Just as the white, shining tip of the blade was about to pierce his heart. Yeah! Sanon screamed in anguish, dropping the sword he was gripping. Sanon? What just happened? <sighs> when I ran towards him, Sanon collapsed to the floor. <laughs> the names are so messed up for this part. Sanon! Hang in there! Sanon! I ran over to him and rushed to check his pulse. He's still breathing. He only lost consciousness. 
Ah, we didn't have to spell his guts this time. That's nice. This alone gave me a great feeling of relief, but suddenly the door behind me slid open. I rushed to look back when... Oh, hello, Soji. Chizuru. Sanan. Okita. Sanan! He's... Okita had a cold expression. Let me get a look at him. His eyes narrowed and I saw them flick around the room, from Sanan's limp body to myself to the shattered vial. Okita's mouth tightened and he bent down to lift Sanan off the floor. When you drink that stuff, supposedly your body just can't handle it. It hurts like hell and you start to lose it. He probably couldn't take it and just passed out. Oh. After finding that it wasn't life-threatening, I felt a pang of relief. Well, the real painful part comes later. We can't afford for Sanan to ju die just yet, so make sure he hangs in there. His tone was surprisingly detached considering the circumstances, and Okita picked up Sanan before leaving the room. Once they left, I collapsed to the floor out of supreme exhaustion and slumped into myself. I finally tapped into the secrets of the Shinsengumi. For so long it was kept from me, and now their forbidden secrets were revealed. My mind went blank due to confusion and fear, but I knew what I saw. After Sanan collapsed, the captains rushed into the room. They must have heard the commotion from the common room, eventually. Everything glowed white after, and I realized that I was in a daze. None of their words stuck in my ear, and I wobbled back to my room. Seriously. You can really be a pain, you know that. Okita had taken me back to my room, and I heard him as soon as he opened the door for me. Time for you to explain what went on last night. Why were you in there with Sanan? Okita was never particularly pleasant to me, but his tone was even harsher than usual. I felt like there was someone in the common room. I was curious, so I had a look. I found Sanon in there. I see. Okita uh, Okita's lackadaisical response seemed disarming, and he just scanned me. Um. Although my mind had cleared somewhat, it was still difficult to keep my thoughts organized. One, however, rose quickly to the surface. Is it true that my father had something to do with that? That stuff that Sanon drank? Did Sanon tell you that? Yes. He said it makes you stronger, but it drives you mad. He fixed his eyes warily on the ceiling above us, sighing before eventually answering my question. <sighs> you are the daughter of the man who made that stuff, and you've seen what happens to the men who go crazy. I suppose you do have a right to know. It'd be easier to just kill you, but... Ah, well. His manner of speaking was far removed than his usual joking self when he mentioned killing, but this time it felt like he meant it. He could kill me at any time. So, you got any questions? I suppose I can answer one. Um... I desperately searched for the words. Why did the Shinsengumi get involved in something like this? Our job is to crack down on outlaw Ronin, but... You know that doing so isn't some walk in the park, right? Yeah. Among the Ronin, there are plenty that are actually skilled swordsmen. When I was on rounds, I saw many such men fighting and dueling amongst themselves. When we started out, we were really short on men. Our reputation was shit, and we couldn't pay that well either. Anyway, we didn't have many people asking to join, and those that did were pretty disappointing. That was when some guy from the Shogunate showed up and offered to make us part of this experiment. An experiment? That must have been what Sanon was referring to. So, you knew what the side effects were and you still made them take it? We didn't make them take it. It was their choice. 
You see, the Shinsengumi has this thing called the Rules of Conduct. Just so you don't get all confused, it's a set of rules we employ to keep everyone in line. Usually, if you break our rules, we make you cut yourself open. Cut yourself open?! Uh, why are you so surprised? The only way a warrior can own up to something is by cutting themselves open. <laughs> Traditionally, when samurai disgraced themselves, they drove their swords into their bellies. I had thought such traditions were obsolete, and that now the worst they do is pretend to cut themselves open with a fan. You get it, right? If they're gonna die anyways, don't you think it makes more sense for them to save some face and take it into their own hands? For these guys, we gave them a choice. Kill yourself, or drink the Shogun's concoction. You get it. Don't you feel bad for them? I couldn't think of anything to say. What sort of a choice was that? Death by your own hand, or madness and death by someone else's? The men that I'd encountered that winter night. Had their last thoughts as men been hope they might survive the madness? It sounded horrible. Something that makes you strong and hard to kill should be really great, right? In actuality, though, they ended up being a piece of cake. We could easily kill them all. In a moment, I was taken back to that fateful night when Okita dispatched the warriors with white hair without any effort. I wonder what's going to happen to Sanon. I was worried, too. Was Sanon okay? Would he... change? My stomach was twisting itself into knots. And so the long night broke. And we can skip this, because we're just going to talk about how Sanon actually ended up surviving all of that. And keeping Ito in the dark. Interesting. So when Sanon loses his mind, he starts spouting poetry. <laughs> Good to know. Something to look forward to. Definitely got Ukiyo vibes from him, and I'm, now I'm wondering about the whole glasses thing. <laughs> hmm. Alright. We be fading again. And now it's June. I can't remember when Heisuke comes back. Okay, we've moved. We remember him being... Having... We actually had a memory this time instead of just being like, that fateful night. Oh no! Can I go back? Oh, I missed out. Whoops. Okay. Oh boy, I really scrolled up too far. Come on now, where are you? Alright. Okay. Can I... Yes. Hey! I didn't know you could do that. That's a nice feature. All right. Heisuke and I made our way through the crowded as usual streets of Kyoto at a brisk pace. You know, I haven't gone out on patrol with you in quite a while, Heisuke. It's nice to have you back. Huh? Oh, yeah, I guess not. Edo had me pretty busy. So how was it while I was gone? Shin and Sano didn't bug you while I was gone, did they? Everything was fine, and they were kind to me. Ah, that's good. So, any updates on your dad? Did you find any leads? None at all. Ah, I see. I stopped by your old place in Edo with the information you gave me, but... Well... There were no signs of anyone returning. Seriously, I wonder where he went. The somberness of Heisuke's expression started to rub off on me. Now I was depressed. Oh, thank you for taking the time to look, anyway. There's nothing to thank me for. 
I mean, the fact you're not allowed to come and go as you please is completely our fault. Heisuke? Heisuke stopped himself mid-sentence, which was jarring. Ever since he returned from Edo, he's looked glum. Hey, Heisuke? How about you? It's been a while since you were in Kyoto. Does it seem different from Edo? Hmm. Well, I sort of feel like the town has... changed. So have the people. Huh? I wondered what was going through his head. Did something happen to him in Edo? His sudden change of character confused me. Hmm? Heisuke's head jerked up slightly and he looked across the street. He stood on his toes and waved. Hey! Soji! Find anything over there? Nope. Everything's normal. Okita was out on patrol as well, although his route took him through a different part of the city. Well, normal for now, at least. I'm sure things will pick up once the Shogun gets here. The Shogun's coming to visit Kyoto? Yep, it's got Kondo all worked up, too. Kondo truly respects Shogun Iemochi. Ah, I see. I hope it turns out well. Right, Heisuke? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I bet he is. Huh? Something had really gotten into him. I glanced at Okita to see if he noticed anything. <coughs> Okita? Are you alright? I'm fine. I think I just caught a cold or something. Ah, I see. Well, please, take care of yourself. I have medicine to treat colds, so I'll give you some when we return. Oh yeah. Thanks. I guess having you around comes in handy at times. Hmm. What's the matter? Okita's eyes looked past me, and suddenly something caught his attention off to the side. Whoa, whoa! What do you mean, no? Oh, Kaoru. Stop it! Let go of me! We're patriots, fighting every day to kick those damn foreigners out of our country. You owe us a little booze. Or maybe even, heh, a little... company. Across the street, a clump of perhaps three or four men were harassing a young girl. Okita! Heisuke! I see them! Stay here! But it appeared that Okita got to them first. Well, well. Guess patriots aren't what they used to be with men like you throwing the title around. The usual crowd shuffled away from Okita and the men as quickly as they could. No one wanted to be near the sight of unsheathed blades. The Ronin's eyes found Okita's jacket and the men stiffened. Yet yeah, you're one of those Shinsengumi fellows, ain't ya? Ah, you must be the brains. So tell me, Chief, what's it gonna be? His lips curled into a predatory smile as his hand gripped his sword. There was no mirth in that rictus grin, and the Ronin's faces grew much paler. Their moves were not totally deflated yet, as their ringleader made one more attempt. God damn it. Get out of here, ya brown nosing son of a bitch! Shut up. If you really want to live, maybe you should follow your own advice. The sight of two Shinsengumi blue jackets standing shoulder to shoulder was enough to deter the men. Screw you guys! The last of the color drained from their faces and they turned tail and ran. Ah, if they're gonna just run away at the sight of us, then they never should have picked a fight with us in the first place. Um, you aren't going to go after them? Arrest them? And charge them with which crime, exactly? Didn't figure you for the Iron Fist sort. I didn't really mean it like that. Um, thank you for saving me. My name is Kaoru Nagamo. I watched as the girl gave Okita a quick bow. She was so refined, so ladylike. Even dressed like a girl, I doubted I could ever be as elegant as her. I'd only just begun to feel sorry for myself when suddenly I felt a hand on my arm. Whoa! O Okita? Calm down, kid. Come here and stand next to her. Um... It's uncanny. 
He shoved me next to the girl we just rescued, then stepped back to stroke his chin thoughtfully. Uh, um... Okita? I glanced nervously toward the girl and attempted to smile kindly under the circumstances. The smile she gave me in return was beautiful, but there was something about it that seemed... odd. She... seems familiar. Just as I thought. They look just like each other. We look like... That's when I finally realized. She was identical to whom I saw in the mirror. Really? I don't think they look alike at all. No, no, no. They're practically identical. Dress the kid up like a girl and you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Okay, to... She seems troubled. Oh, um... I have to say something, but what? Perhaps she saw it through my confusion, or perhaps it was something else. I wish to thank you properly, but I'm afraid you've caught me in the middle of an important errand which I must attend to. Please, forgive my rudeness. I hope I will be able to repay you soon, Okito the Shinsengumi. With that, the girl who called herself Kaoru disappeared into the crowds of Kyoto, although the uneasiness created by her presence remained. Hey, hey, hey! Looks like she's got the hots for you, Soji! Ha! Oh, Heisuke. Is that really what you think? You've got a long way to go before you're at Sano's level. What? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Their back and forth continued, but my mind was elsewhere. Last night's rain left a number of puddles on the road, and when I looked into them, I saw a strange girl who looked just like me. Kaoru, huh? Wind caught the surface of the puddle, sending a flurry of ripples across it. Come on! Let's get moving! Alright, I'm coming! I turned and ran toward Heisuke and Okita, already on their way back to headquarters. <laughs>